The U.S. military is scrambling to recover an F-35 stealth fighter that crashed into the South China Sea on Monday. It is the most sophisticated warplane the U.S. has, and the U.S. fears China may try to reach the wreckage first. The final approach of an F-35C stealth fighter jet, seconds before it crash lands into the flight deck of a U.S. aircraft carrier. Images circulated on social media, confirmed by the U.S. Navy, show the plane moments later in the ocean, canopy open after its pilot escaped. The cause of the crash, which injured the pilot and six sailors, still under investigation. The Navy now has the difficult task of recovering the wreckage of a $100 million jet from the bottom of the ocean. The crash occurred here in the South China Sea, a heavily trafficked body of water that Beijing claims almost all for itself. What's up, everybody? Major Retired Richard Ojeda here. And first off, let me start by saying how grateful that I am that the pilot and six sailors were only injured and not killed as a result of this accident. Oftentimes, we hear the word on the news injured, and civilians assume it's just some scrapes and bruises. But for those of us who have served, we know that injuries sustained in the military can haunt you for the rest of your life. And just to give you a quick glimpse, I served 24 years in the military and deployed to numerous combat zones. And some of my injuries include traumatic brain injury and damaged knees that resulted in multiple knee surgeries. And that's not all. And I'm not lifting this for anyone to feel any type of sympathy from me or anything like that. I just wanted to give you all a perspective of what injury could mean for the pilot and those sailors. If you survived, it's considered wounded or injured. The loss of an extremity falls in that category. Now let's get into the geopolitical ramifications of this story. China has made it their mission to rip off anything and everything they can from the United States, including our military technology, which happens to be the best in the world. We spend trillions of dollars on military research and development, and I'm not happy that that number is that high, but that's a topic for a different video. Meanwhile, China and Russia and a few other nefarious countries allocate their resources specifically to steal ours. What we see as an accident, they view as a golden opportunity, and that is something that we must address. Just add that to the long list of international problems President Biden now has on his plate. Now look, I know that many of you are wondering why on earth do we have so many warplanes and personnel in that region? And to that, I say I believe in letting our allies know that we have their back and that they have ours. Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, Australia, Indonesia, all allies are facing a very powerful communist regime that opposes human rights and basic freedoms that we take advantage of, like freedom of speech. Those countries do not have nuclear capabilities to fight off the Chinese if they ever decided to invade. And of course, a nation like Japan could easily develop nuclear technology, but they don't because of alliances and treaties that we have signed. If the United States and our allies do not show strength, the Chinese will view that as a green light to do whatever they want, and the world will be worse off. So to answer everyone's questions, the United States has a presence in the South China Sea to prevent World War III. Sappers clear the way, airborne all the way.